Hey, everybody, and welcome back to a very special bonus episode of the No Vacancy Podcast. You know, today I've got one of my uh, good friends, but more importantly, um, he's running a great event that's going to be coming this March to you and happens to also be Senior Vice President of Business Development with Park West General Contractors. His name is uh, Craig Sullivan, and man, I I love this guy, and by the end of this conversation, I think you will too. Craig, sir, how are you? I'm great, Glenn. How are you? And thank you for having me on your podcast. This is great. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. And it's about time we, we've got this thing set up. You know, we've been talking a lot for, for a lot of years. And one of the things that I like to hear about were all these great stories about the renovations that you do. Because while you could build new hotels, you're also getting in there and you're helping do massive renovations to help reposition those hotel assets and all of that kind of uh, good stuff. So I'm hoping we can have a little bit of a conversation with you about that. And then also talking about this great conference that you're putting together in March called uh, Click. What does that uh, stand for? California Lodging Investment Conference? That's it, my friend. You got it right. Well, you, you, uh, yeah, go on. Sorry, Craig. I'm going to say, yeah, no, this is going to be our inaugural year. And, uh, we're really looking forward to putting this event together. We've got a lot of uh, uh, of our hotel community here in California uh, helping out, so it should be a great event for everybody. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm really glad that I knew what that meant. You know, I don't know if you know this about me, Craig, but I actually majored in acronyms at the University of Maryland, so I'm really good with that stuff. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a BS degree in that, so <laughs> it, it all You'd go for the poli sci, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, honestly, I probably um, met, you know worked more on chicken wings and beer and that sort of stuff. But now I'm a respectable person who loves the hotel business. And one of the things I like most is when I step into an older building that surprisingly has been refreshed and reimagined. And that's kind of what the thing that you folks are really experts with at, at Park West, right? That's really the backbone of our business, Glenn. And Park West is a little over 30-year-old general contractor. 95% of what we do is hospitality-related. I came on board with them a little over four years ago to really help drive more of the hospitality business to the company. And it is. It's it's great. Uh, Because of our size, because of our understanding, and we can help the owners with you know, the deep renovations, repositioning of hotel assets, you know, new flags, uh, revenue management to a degree that we're constantly talking to the GM, the front desk, uh, director of sales. And, you know, they get that last minute Smurf group that comes in and the 30 rooms that we were supposed to get to uh, renovate, you know, we have to go do something else. And uh, we, we adapt pretty easily with the staff. So you say you go do something else. What does that What does that entail? Just going to Disneyland for the day? Yeah, you know, sometimes we go to Disneyland. We're there in Anaheim. Uh, exactly. Yeah, typically what we'll do is if they don't have the ballrooms, uh, uh, you know, rent it out. We'll go in and do the renovation mm-hmm. there, start the demo, get, uh, you know, if we've got our, our, uh, our paint, you know, ready to go. We've got the carpeting, uh, you know, ready to be installed. We can, you know, slide over to that phase of the project and be adaptable and, and meet the needs of the hotel. That's great. And this is the time for hoteliers to really consider putting a lot of money back into your hotel. We're at the peak of the market right now. And as much as that is exciting, it means after the peak, you know, or the nature of the cyclical business, we're going to start to go the other way. And it's really critical to make sure your property is in the best condition possible for any of those headwinds that you may be eventually facing. Right, Craig? I completely agree. And, you know, um, you posted a very interesting uh, social media uh, uh, blog this morning in reference to CapEx expenditures this year being. uh, I have it on my screen right now, Craig, because uh, (laughs) I I realized as we started this conversation, it might be a good factoid to throw in there. So I have it in front of me. Let me throw this out. Uh, The amount spent on capital expenditures for the U.S. lodging industry this year is forecast to be a record level $6.6 billion. That equates to about $1,350 for every room in the entire country. Not that every room has spent that kind of money, but that's a little fun figure to throw out there anyway. Uh, That's a great figure. And, you know, in the, uh, the four plus years that I've been with park West, it's, you know, we've seen tremendous growth and it is because of those CapEx expenditures. Um, And you're right. You know, the, the hotel owners, 
you know, you know this as well as I do. Your best owner operator is the one that understands uh, this is a two part business. It's it's a cash business. It's a commodity that has to be sold every 24 hours, and it's also a real estate play. And if you don't spend that money to update, renovate, enhance your hotel, whether it's the lobby, the guest rooms, other public spaces, the food and beverage component, you know, you've got a competitor right down the road from you that's going to be doing that, and you're going to lose market share. So, yeah, these these things are all all needed. I mean, you look at at the revolution we had in the uh, select service arena, you know, with the advent of Hyatt going into that, that space. Wow, really and, changed it. You know, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, Courtyard, you know, Marriott came back and put in a, a social lobby in the bistro. It was a <laughs> huge change. And I spent um, a year watching television commercials about the lobby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, didn't we all, you know? And, uh, you know, we're getting ready to start a project uh, up north where – We've got a pip on a courtyard, and luckily they've already had the uh, the new lobby, you know, installed. So we're, we're just yeah, really touching that up a bit. It's more in the guest rooms, but uh, yeah, the impact's been dramatic, and you know they've got a far better product now than what they had prior to Hyatt coming onto the scene with uh, select service. And one of the things I'm seeing these days, Craig, is this um, focus on those really deep renovations. I mean, I'm not just talking about repositioning an asset. It's more about reinventing the whole notion of a property, and I know you're involved in those. What are some of the um, typical types of property renovations that you're seeing out there in the market these days and participating in? Well, it's funny. We just completed a project here in Southern California. We had a 15-year-old box that probably didn't have any work done to it since it opened initially, and it was in pretty bad shape. Uh, New ownership came in, and we had roughly a six-plus-million-dollar renovation. They handed us the hotel empty, which is really a rarity. Uh, uh, empty, meaning um, uh, nothing was in the hotel or just no guests in the hotel? No guests. They closed the hotel when they acquired the property. Wow. They, uh, they didn't take any more reservations. They didn't want to. And, and it's not like the hotel was doing that great. It was running probably about 35% occupancy. So that'll give you an idea on how tired it was. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that's not, that's not know, a good I mean, thing. <laughs> no, they still had the same furniture package from 15, 17 years ago when it opened. So, you know, there was, there was really no, no money. Spent wow. By the well, maybe, owner. maybe they should have taken that furniture and put it up on Antiques Roadshow and see what those guys had to say about it. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they yeah, were sitting, you know, so. everything old is new again, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that was a, that was a unique thing. And, you know, basically, you know, we, we went through there, did all the demo and a job that, uh, you know, if it was an open hotel, probably would have taken anywhere from 12 to 14 months, you know, floor by floor. Um, you know, we got it done in, well, we started uh, demo in January and we handed the hotel back to them in August. So eight months. And we didn't have complete construction plans when we started. So it was really more demo. And then uh, we helped the uh, novice ownership group uh, compile the, the, the entire team. We brought in the architects, the designers, wow. procurement, and basically went through a rigorous interview process at our office um, over a, uh, a, a several-day period. And, you know, very fortunate for, for us and for me in particular, in each case, they picked an outstanding group. And it was one of those teams that was put together on the fly, but really worked well together. All right. So if we're talking about a uh, lot of demolition, then I'm thinking maybe your perfect team is uh, from Demolition Man. You know, a little Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes in there, winning combination, perhaps? That's it. (laughs) That's it. Well, and, and, you know, you know me. I'm right handed. And then the joke in my company is. You know, hand Craig the left-handed screwdriver. So, you know, I'm not the one swigging the, swigging the hammer on demo day, you know? So, uh, uh, so I want to, uh, but yeah. I want to talk about, um, you know, you have this opportunity here, and, and you probably used it as a model for all of the latest trends that we're seeing now in the hospitality type of a universe, right? So, yeah. What are some of the things that you're seeing out there that you might have incorporated in this particular property that shows that you're really not just trend forward, but really understanding what the market is interested in in enjoying these days in a hotel product? 
Well, with this particular product, and this is an extended stay product, and it's in the uh, Disneyland Resort area, so that's pretty much a defined box. Right. But it was, you know, new kitchens, bigger kitchens, better appliances. And the thing that was really special and unique about this project, besides the hotel coming to us uh, shut down, was that we added a pool to the third floor deck area on the uh, wow. northwest side of the building. So, you know, it was um, very unusual, uh, a lot of structural steel and, you know, re-supporting in certain areas of the building. And it, it just, you know, it was uh, almost three quarters of a million dollars to add this pool. And it's, you know, 10 by 20 and three feet deep. Um, but, you know, it's one of those boxes that, you know, equity partners want checked off when you're in a resort area. Yeah. Um, well, you kind of yeah, have to so have you, that if you're in a resort area, even though, quite frankly, if I'm at the Disneyland resort area, I'm not spending the day at the pool. I'm spending the day online right. for that Cars ride over California Adventure, you know? Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, mom and dad can, you know, barbecue, there's a barbecue area up there, mm -hmm. so they can barbecue for the kids and the kids can play in the pool and they can have a glass of wine and relax a little bit. I thought that's what your house was for. Oh, well, it is, it is, but, and I, I've got a bigger pool, it's the Pacific Ocean, so it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> Always cool to a nice 68 degrees though, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I love this idea of deep renovations, but the other thing that you're doing is really repositioning a lot of hotel assets. As we've seen, a lot of hotels exchange, ha exchange hands and ownership over the last number of years. Typically, what happens is it needs to be redeveloped. You're not just going in there and putting on another layer of paint. You're changing the entire focus of the property. How does something like that typically work when it comes to what you do? Well, you know, that's a very good question, Glenn. And typically how that'll work is, you know, once the ownership group has either decided to move on for a number of reasons to and reposition the hotel or even stay in some cases, um, they understand that. You know, their brand is probably 25% of the value, and nobody wants to take a hit on losing any value. So when they do reposition, they, they've looked at it, they've done all the modeling, they've got their, their act together on that, and it's a big, big step. And typically, you will have, you know, uh, an outdated uh, lobby bar area that, you know, really ceased to function a few years ago. Right. Um, so, you know, we'll completely redo the lobby. We'll completely open it up. We'll get rid of these big mammoth uh, front desks and maybe go to pods. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, typically, you know, that that's, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit more welcoming. You're not getting so much of that bank teller feeling. I, yeah, I agree. I, I equate it to really breaking down the barriers between the, the customer service and, and the property and the individual. I think it makes you more friendly. It doesn't feel as yep. transactional. It really hits in more of that experiential kind of feel. But you touched on something that I think is really interesting to me, Craig. And we're talking about that, lo that lobby bar. But it wasn't always a lobby bar. It was a lot of times hidden away, right? So – that right. seems like a big project to reconfigure everything to make sure that that is a centerpiece up front and center that creates an energy about it and therefore it drives more sales. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it is. It's that crown jewel in that remodel of, of the uh, of the lobby area. And, you know, yeah, it was tucked away in a corner or off to one side and now it's front and center in most cases. And you've got a nice big circular bar multiple bartenders, multiple drink stations. Um, they've got servers. And, and another thing that they've started doing as well is having tables at different heights. Um, so it doesn't look like a sea of empty tables when nobody's there. It kind of breaks it up. That's interesting. Um, I also think it creates yeah. different social zones. And I, I know that when I'm out with people, I have a different feeling. If I'm with the, the family, I might want to sit in some lower, more comfortable chairs. But if I'm out there trying to right. be active, I want to sit at those um, you know, high tops. Yeah, the cocktail tables and, and, and the stool. Absolutely. And, you know, you can be a little bit more animated when you're, you're, you're sitting up there, and, you know, whether you're entertaining clients or, or meeting friends, you know, before or after a football game, let's say. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of advantages there and, and traffic patterns of lighting and, 
you know, even, you know, the, the mood music that, that's coming in, we've gotten away from, you know, so much of the sterilized canned music that was, you know, it was so horrible. Uh, Can we also so move there, away there, from just having techno music constantly play all the time? Could you put that in? Oh, I, I hear you. That back, that European backbeat. Yeah, I got to stop. That. <laughs> so, I was thinking of adding that to this it. podcast. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll have that. <laughs> <It'll> be, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it'll be like you and me at a rave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of our trips to the to uh, the 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 uh, Palms in Vegas many years ago. So, uh, yes, for, uh, for sure. All right. So, um, speaking about the, the these deep renovations, what kinds of stuff are you seeing in the guest room? now that you're you're changing um you know we're past the world of um getting rid of the armoires for slimmer tvs but there's more innovations that are coming that you need to consider especially in the bathroom i'd say yeah you know bathroom renovations have really taken on a life of their own and that and that's that's really a good place to start um you know it's the, the days of having you know a tub shower combo are going by the wayside in a lot of cases and now you're getting a big expansive shower area and some of them have even got shower systems where you know you not only have the overhead rain uh shower head but you've got the wand you might have body jets um you know they've gotten to really interesting uh tile and patterns and and clear glass and getting rid of the shower curtains uh, in a lot of cases, well, in all yeah. cases where they've gone to just a shower and, you know, they're, you know, one of my personal favorites is that they're getting rid of those 1970s low boy commodes. Okay. Those are gone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> finally, uh, <laughs> you know, getting rid of those. Uh, well, that's you know, good because the older I get, the harder it is to get up and down. Hey, it's just like, you know, I stayed at a boutique hotel here in Los Angeles not too long ago, and, and the mattresses were on the floor, and I'm going, okay, I'm well beyond college, age, okay? <laughs> this doesn't work. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, you get into, into lighting fixtures and mirrors, and, you know, what's the biggest complaint in a hotel typically from the female guest is inadequate lighting in the bathroom, yeah. you know, for makeup and, and all of that. So, you know, it's taken a while, but the industry as a whole is changing that. You've got, you know, you've got more than ample lighting now. And a lot of them are going to the uh, LED lights built into the mirror as well, besides the overhead. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's they're, they're enhancing your experience right. at the hotel. And that's what they needed to do. And it's, 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 it's been a lot of fun watching some of these projects come together and how they're, you know, taking, you know, uh, basically, you know, the bathroom and, and, and redefining it almost. So it's, it's, it's good. I love it. But I'd like for you to redefine something in the main part of the guest room too, because I'm tired of 800 lamps in the room, not to offend any of my uh, friends out there that might sell those particular products. <sighs> But can we do something to get better lighting in the actual guest room without me having to find 8,000 different switches? You know, I think we do. Um, and I think as we start moving more and more into the LED lighting as being the standard, um, I think you're going to get that flexibility and that utility need uh, redefined. And I think it's, it's, it's going to be a process right I, now. I think for, so, too. Yeah, but yeah, I also think, Craig, years. I also think, Craig, that um, perhaps, you know, that master light switch is a great is, is a great thing because then I could just hit that one button. All the lamps will go on. Lamp guys get to sell their product. I get to be happy. I unfortunately have to look at myself in the mirror with all that great lighting. But then again, you know, I'm willing to make a sacrifice for the greater good of our people. I, I couldn't <laughs> agree more with you. you know, I think, yeah, that master switch and, you know, let's take it even a step farther and take a cue. Uh, from the European uh, hoteliers and let's use your room key if you're still using one and it's not on your smartphone and that completes the circuit other than a, you know, utility light that stays on, you yeah. know, or comes on at, at dusk. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot coming there. And I think also as you start redefining the standard bay in a hotel and the newer ones, and you've got, you know, you've got one bigger room and you've got a, a room divider basically cutting the, the bedroom off from almost a living room area in, in some standard rooms. There's a lot of hotels like that down in San Diego. 
Mm-hmm. Um, now you've got the TV on a swivel, so you know you can watch it from your bed, or you can watch it from the the living yeah. the uh, the sofa in the uh, other part of the of the room. So yeah, that's a smart there, approach. There's a lot of nice things from Yeah, smart approach. You don't have to go out and buy two televisions now. You know, it, it gives a little bit more privacy to the the sleeping area in the room. And, you know, I think, I think it's a good idea. I think also improved Wi-Fi. you know, that's, you know, for, for those of us who live off of being connected to the internet, um, you know, you might have great Wi-Fi in the lobby or, you know, the uh, pre-function space at the, at the ballrooms and, and in the meeting spaces, but you get into the room and all of a sudden it drops dramatically, you know, and then they, there's an extra fee to get an upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know. I don't. I don't want to get too into that. Then we're going to totally spiral uh, <laughs> off course with this particular podcast. So let me focus that because that might be something that um, a lot of the major hotel companies are thinking about in terms of the pips that they're putting out there. Right? Um, yeah. They've really exactly. gotten a lot more serious in regarding these property improvement plans, and I'm curious as to what are you seeing mostly, and how are you able to uh, deliver results to satisfy those pips? Yeah, the the pips have gotten substantially more dense in in what the brands are requiring. And, you know, you you get into some place like, you know, LAX or Kennedy or, you know, Orlando or Anaheim, where you've got these huge traffic patterns basically, you know, for 12 months out of the year. you know, and, and, and these changes are going to be deep and they're going to be costly. Hence, you know, the, the blog that you posted this morning, Yep. um, you know, and, and that just confirms all of that, that, you know, we've got, we've got to separate ourselves from the rest of the pack. We've got to do something different. We've got to do something that's innovative and that, you know, people are going to like, and, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why we go through so much modeling. And, you know, we, we like doing a model room for any renovation. Really? Because if we do one and, yeah, yeah because, you know, we can work out all the bugs in mm-hmm. that one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of times what the designers come up with may or, you know, be very functional for the room. In other cases, it may not be. And, you know, it, it gets back to, you know, your design, your architectural Let's take a look at the materials and the specs and, and let's see how this is all going to come together. And, you know, it, it's, it's far cheaper to do, you know, you've got two different themes. Let's do two different model rooms and let's see which one you want. So, you know, and, and by that time when you've gotten through it, you've, you've either changed some of the materials or the color palette or a number of things, you know, you've got it dialed in and that helps us do our job to the best of our ability to make things go as smooth as possible. You know, the unknown factor is you open up a wall and you see if there's water damage. Okay. Did it actually come from our bathroom suite or Mm. the, the room above us? Right. Okay. And you know, okay. So now did this go all the way down from, you know, floor six to, to two and we may have to, you know, replace drywalling and a number of other things. Uh, you know, we also provide emergency services uh, for hotels in the Southland. Um, we got a call from uh, a downtown Los Angeles hotel. They had about a, a four or five inch water pipe break in one of their towers, and it took out three floors. And the hotel was totally sold out oh in about God. a two week time. Um, so we had a crew there 24 7. You know, and we just uh, we had 97 percent of those rooms back into operations uh, within that two week period after we repaired the water leak. Uh, but I mean, the amount of gallons that came down from, let's say, the ninth floor, it's just like, you know, luckily it was we got it contained to three floors only. So, Ooh. you know, it was it was massive. So that's pretty scary you know. stuff. So that's a huge challenge. Any other strange, weird stories from your uh, renovation days there? You know, again, we had this hotel that that we we got that was shut down. And I think this is, you know, it's humorous and sad all at the same time. (laughs) My favorite kind of story is good ones with lots of pickles. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So we've got it shut down. We've got security. 
We've got temporary fences over the openings and the uh, uh, on-site parking. And we've got people jumping over the fences and trying to get into the building. Security's already rounded them up, okay? Right. They're tagging the building. They're oh, doing boy. all types of things. Police are on site. They've got two guys in the back of their car already. Right. And there's four more coming over the back fence and trying to break <laughs> in through a door. So, you know, it was like, you've got to be kidding me. You know? <laughs> so, you know, so we had increased security. We had roving patrols. And this is a 152 key hotel. Wow. Okay. So, so uh, I would say not something that was in the bad part of town. It was in, in, in right. a really good part of, of Orange County. Oh so. my goodness gracious. And there kids is why you shouldn't be doing too many drugs. <laughs> you lose yeah, exactly. all, all exactly. sense about what's going on around you. All right. So that story, yeah. that story may not, um, you know, click with certain people, but something that does is that California Lodging Investment Conference that you're doing on March 9th, 2017, coming to the Hilton Irvine Orange County Airport, which I love because if you're from Northern California, you just fly in and walk across the street and boom, you're right there. So Craig, one day conference. I love the idea because I'm getting tired of having to spend three, four days out of the office to, to get my business done. I agree. I mean, you know, We've got three major hotel conferences in the Western United States, and I have been a sponsor at all of them. I've been on panels at all of them, and I support all of them every year uh, by being a attendee. Um, and they're and they're great conferences, but they're all nationally focused. And you know, I've been thinking about this for a couple of years, and I used to put on. Um, you know, co-produce uh, commercial, a broad-based commercial real estate conference mm -hmm. with uh, my friends over at the All Star Group, and you know, we I, I stepped away from that, and I always wanted to add a hotel component to that conference, but the the timing was just off. Right. And really, so over the past couple of years, I've been kicking this around, revising this, and, and doing a one-day event. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to start it at. 9:30 in the morning when we open the gate, we're gonna. We're, everything is gonna be a general session, and this is hotel lending. This is hotel investment. Um, you know, we've got uh, third-party professionals, we've got owner operators, brokers, lenders. Um, yeah, you know, and and we're gonna be done between four and four thirty, and then we'll have a networking mixer at the end. And you know, you, you we're gonna do it on a Thursday. You're back to work on Friday. Um, you know, you're like, you're, you're flying out for a couple of days for it. And I'm really great, grateful that you're going to be moderating, uh, one of our panels and you're going to be opening up the, the conference for us. So you get to do the heavy lifting instead of me. Yeah. And I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, I, I love doing it. Although I can't necessarily say you're making the best decisions by having me do that for your conference, but I'm going to go <laughs> along with it because <laughs> I like hanging out with you. <laughs> But, so, uh, you know, it, and this, this conference is solely focused on California and our hotel market. If you look at, at the great state of California, if we were a sovereign nation, we would have either the fifth or sixth largest economy globally. Okay. So that speaks volumes right, right there. The other thing is that, you know, between open operating and the development pipeline for this state, We've got nearly 10,000 hotels, okay? so That's a you know, lot it, of hotels. Wow, I didn't realize yeah. it was that many. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's grown dramatically. And, you know, I mean, if you look at everything, you look at the B&Bs, you look at the small mom-and-pop independents, you look at the boutique sector, you look at, you know, mid-scale, upper-mid-scale, upper-upper-mid-scale, and, and you keep going – and destination resorts, um, you know, in the state, I mean, really, this is you know, about the only state in, in the country where you can be surfing in the morning. And if we ever get rain again in Southern California, we might have <laughs> snow in our mountains and you can go skiing in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And we've got some, you know, uh, a, a, a dramatic difference in some of these hotels between California coastal and desert and mountain and urban and you know the the experiences in the state are are really second to none you know new york's the greatest city in the world i love it there i've got a ton of family there 
but I'm California born and bred. So, yeah, you are. You know. And uh, I, <laughs> and wistful for Hawaii, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got a, got a little bit of aloha in me. Yeah. <laughs> that, so. that, that's for sure. So I, I will say this. I'm looking forward to being out there. And after the conference is over, I'm probably going to go try to sneak into the back of Disneyland to see that Star Wars land construction coming out. Because, uh, you know, I love that construction thing. And I especially like what they're doing over there. So I'm, I'm psyched to be coming Well, let out me there. know and I'll drive you over. I'll go with you. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, we'll go on top of the uh, parking garage and look on over and, you know, make some comments about it. But more importantly, I urge everybody to go check out the Click Conference. You can find that at clickconference.com. That's C-L-I conference.com. Um, any final words from you? Some shameless plugs, perhaps? One shameless plug for the Click Conference is that we are doing an early bird registration right now. So if you go online at the website that Glenn so graciously just gave you, clickconference.com, um, you can get a discount. Yep, cliconference.com. Great, excellent. And what about Park West? Because you know um, I've got all these hotels I need renovating. How do I get in touch with you? You can call us at Park West at seven one four six three two eight zero zero one and ask for Craig Sullivan. Uh, we work throughout the Western United States and we virtually will do everything from a 30 key independent to a 500 room urban conference hotel. Um, so we're, we're here, we're adaptable to your needs, repositioning, rebranding, refreshing, uh, pips. Yeah, we're we're here. We've got a great crew, and uh, matter of fact, uh, I was a client, and they hired me. That's how I came on board. I left uh, a hotel ownership group and came on board. That's, so that's uh, pretty cool. Well, listen, I got yeah, a, I, a, I got a mean mean pip coming up issued by my wife for my kitchen. Maybe we could talk about you helping me with that, even though I'm an East Coast cat. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I, I will not be the project manager. You will be. Oh, boy. Because you got to keep your wife happy, but I'll, I'll send some of our guys out. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Craig. And I want to thank all of you for listening. I love what these guys do. I'm a big fan, and I highly encourage you to attend this conference. And if you've got a hotel, consider using them for your renovation product, for your renovation. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Craig. Thank you, Glenn. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And for all of you, I will be back next week with another exciting episode. That is, unless I decide to run away to Disneyland to become part of the Star Wars land construction. Thanks for listening. See you next time. 